Okay, it's the Ped State Blitz, Greg, Senior Day Edition. Yes. Which means the season, the regular season's over. I think we both kind of thought Penn State would be in control against a Maryland team that probably expended a lot of energy against Ohio State. Mm -hmm. and probably was a little flat today. I, they looked a little flat to me. Yeah. My question for you, though, to t at the stop uh, at the at the top of this is, considering the way Penn State finished the season, the last three games, won all three. It, would you say their defense right now is a top three defense in the Big Ten? Uh, yeah, I would at this point. I mean, look, they didn't play three very good offenses. Jack Cone, Puke, whatever that mess is at Rutgers, even worse. And then this today. Did you say Puke? Yes, it okay. was very uh, stomach upsetting, I think, for Wisconsin fans to watch that yeah. mess. And I think they just lost to Minnesota by quite a quite a considerable amount. So yeah. um, they have not faced a murderer's row. There's no question mm -hmm. about that. But this is the defense that had Penn State in the game in both the Ohio State and the Michigan State game, I would say, for the most part. Yeah, mm -hmm. could they have some more could they have made some more plays? Yes. They also mm -hmm. could have got some more help from the offense. So I would say this. We both talked on the uh, earlier Saturday that we thought Penn State would have this in hand. I had them with 14 points, so Maryland scoring 14 points. They never were close to that. I mean, Matt Cannon, they kick, kicks and misses a field goal, which didn't help matters. But his Penn State defense has really taken the Brent Pry identity, I think, Bob, over the last, I don't know, five or six games and run with it. And they've had a lot of success because of Yeah, 104 to 6, the last two games between Maryland and Penn State. 66-3 uh, and 38-3. Right. And, uh, is this every, when we remind Dave Jones that Maryland was the team coming for the Big Ten? Every, is, uh, is this when we do that? You know, he probably has already forgotten about <laughs> that prediction that he's made, uh, and I bet you that he would tell us that in the press box a little bit later. What part of the defense do you think has made the biggest jump? Well, I think a couple of things. Number one, you mentioned it a couple of months ago on one of these videos, but Eter Gross Matos has turned into an all-Big Ten player. Yeah. He really has. I mean, this guy has 20 tackles for loss. I'd have to go back and look at the stats unless you already have, but I have to think there's not many Penn State defenders who have eclipsed that mark. Um, yeah, he's taught, there's about six or seven total. Uh, and it's going to be almost impossible. If he can get 10 tackles for loss in the bowl game, <laughs> he will eclipse the single season mark set by the great Courtney Brown. Right. And I just think it's ironic that Courtney holds the record. And I mean, in a, in a lot of ways, I think Penn State fans that were a little bit older would probably say that Etor reminds them of Courtney. Courtney Brown was very soft spoken, not a very loud, you know, outgoing person. Etor is that way right now. Right. When you talk to him, in the, in, he just kind of goes about his business, works hard. He's only a second year sophomore. He's only going to get better. But yeah, 20 tackles for loss in, in, in 12 games, and he's probably 75% of them have probably come in the last five or six games, starting with right. the Iowa game. I also think that Kevin Givens has played very well in the last month. Sharif Miller's played well. Robert Windsor's played well. Um, they, they really, the, the McFarland kid for Maryland, it's not fluky when you run for 500 total yards in two right. games. And he, he never got going. Uh, 12, 12 yards, six carries. It was really the defense, I think, that really carried the day, and it's carried the last three games. And I'll be curious to see if they can build on this and if they see a better offense yeah. in the bowl game, maybe a good offense. We're going to see how far they've really come. I think they actually have developed quite a bit. Yep. But I would really like to see them play a quarterback who could throw the ball. Right, because even going back to Nate Stanley, they haven't really don't seen like a, it. Don't like it. No, they have not, not seen like a that. very good quarterback in quite some time. So, no, I think Parsons is a part of the group. Micah Parsons is part of the group that has taken a step forward. But really, it's hard to find a guy that has taken a step back, I think, in the second half of the season on this Penn State defense. You could probably find one if you thought about it long enough and looked hard enough. But this has just been a good group from really start to finish since the Michigan State game. Yeah, and on the offensive side, Trace McSorley's last game at Beaver Stadium. Much will be written and said about that. But really, I, the more th interesting thing to me about the Penn State offense is the offensive line, even without Michael Mennett today, really kind of had its way with Connor at scrimmage with Connor playing center, Miranda playing right, right guard. Miles Sanders had a 100-yard day. I was, as much as I thought that was impressive, I was almost as impressed by what Ricky Slade did. He's a different kind of runner, and I have a funny feeling he's going to be playing a lot bigger role next year. Um, you, you've called uh, both runners on the recruiting trail. Who was the better recruit coming out of high school, and what would you say about Ricky Slade ready for maybe a bigger role next year? I would say that Slade came to college with more of a uh, – Sanders was tough because, number one, you saw – when he signed, you knew what you had in Saquon Barkley. Yeah. So there wasn't necessarily an expectation. But he ripped through some very good PA defenses at Woodland Hills. Mm -hmm. Ricky Slade is dominating 
Virginia high school football. If you go look at the stats across the, the mm -hmm. Commonwealth down there, I mean, he is just putting up numbers that really have not been seen in Virginia preps in quite some time. He's a, a tremendous guy. I, I'm, I'm speaking of Devin Ford, the guy that's going to sign next year. But when you go back to Slade when he was in high school, he was the same way. He just continued to produce, continued to get better. He's a guy that, look, Penn State doesn't mm. play many freshmen, Bob. So the fact that he's right. seeing considerable time, it was a bummer when he didn't play that much in the middle part of the season. He's really come on now, gotten some confidence back. And we see him score twice today. Regardless of what Miles Sanders does, he'll have a stay or go decision. The Ricky Slade, Penn State training game's in good hands either way. Okay, two more things to get to here on the Penn State Blitz. Uh, one involves uh, bowl destinations. Yes. I'm not a big bowl destination guy. That's really up to Dave Jones, but he's not He's not really in this video <laughs> yet. He's, he's trying to get in this video. We're probably going to cover it. But Greg Pickle, your opinion, yes. your opinion, where do you think they're going? I would say the ceiling at this point is, is the Peach Bowl. The more likely destination is the Citrus Bowl. So we'll see where it plays, how it plays out. I do think that if Penn State can get a couple of breaks, uh, you know, get a couple of losses that are not expected, it could sneak into a New Year's Six Bowl. Uh, the Citrus Bowl looks like more likely for a few different reasons, but we'll see. Uh, it's By the way, be, Dave is, is nodding like he's pacing, giving you he's like a, yeah. 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 So way to go. Off camera Dave for, uh, steps in and gets us that done. But yeah, I mean, I think it's one or the other. It's either Orlando or Atlanta, so we'll have to wait and see. I love it. One final thing. I'm going to make a bold prediction right now. Okay. You tell me if I am <clears throat> overreacting or it's tracking that way. You ready? Yep. Pat Fryermuth. By the time he's done at Penn State, will be a first-round pick in the NFL. Oh, it's trending that way, for sure. There's no question. I mean... Do you realize how unlikely that was at the start of the summer? Right. Oh, I know. I mean, he's a guy that came in a little bit late, and I think a lot of people knew what he was capable yeah. of, but for him to make the rise that he has has just been outstanding. And he's more of the complete package yep. than Mike Kosicki was. Not as athletic, but very, very talented and able to block. You know, I saw that, that you know, he because one of the pro football focus had him with a couple of bad games recently. I'm not sure. You know, I guess if you dive deep down into the yeah. film, maybe. But, yeah, first-round pick potential for sure. It's a high bar you've just put on Mr. <laughs> Fryer Moot in the end of his I first I did season. say it was a bold prediction, but caught another touchdown pass today. Seven on the season. Led the team in receiving. Not a lot of drops. I think he did some good things as a blocker. I think he really picked up his play in the second half of the season. So I don't think it's that far off. I just want to see somebody. I want to see somebody. I mean, Saquon was just a freak. I want to right. see if they're, how long it's going to take for another first-round pick to come through the pipe. It might be it might be Pat Frymuth, but I have a funny feeling Etor might get him get there get first. first right. All right, that's it for this edition of the Senior Day Penn State Blitz.